Our patient is a 2003 Kia Sedona with a 3.5 liter. The issue is that the fuel gauge only goes from full when you fill it up to half. It never drops below half. So we're gonna dig into why is this not going any lower. So full to half, that's all it does. I'm gonna pop up a wiring diagram so we can get the approach that I'm gonna take. So this is our wiring diagram for the instrument cluster. You can see on the left towards the top, we have the fuel meter or the fuel gauge. This wire here, this B6, that's the one we want uh, to pay attention to. So if we come down here to B6, we have a white and green wire. One of these white and green wires goes to the engine control system, that top one, but then this other one, this is the one we're interested in, goes all the way down, all the way down to our fuel pump. So this right here is our variable resistor. So as the resistance of this resistor changes, our gauge will change either higher or lower. So what we're gonna do is put in our own variable resistor. Right here, we're gonna unplug it and we're gonna wire in our own resistor into ground and then that's just a little knob that we will turn uh, either to the left or to the right. All right, so that's our approach. As we turn this knob to the left or to the right, our resistance will change. Therefore, uh, up here on the gauge, this should change as well. This is the information that we'll need as far as what ohms the fuel gauge is looking for. If you see here, this full gauge is looking for eight ohms. So if we apply eight ohms to this, then we should get a full gauge. And then down here, we have this empty gauge and that corresponds to the 200 ohms. So if we apply 200 ohms, our gauge should read empty. And then any ohmage in between those, we'll get our various uh, quarter tank, uh, half tank, three quarter tank, and so on. So this is our ohm information, so now we know what to dial our variable resistor to. So in this vehicle, the access to the fuel pump that we need to get the wires are under here. So this is the back uh, seat. There's a hatch underneath the carpet here, uh, and it's just four bolts, and that comes off. So it looks like we have another layer to disassemble. It's four Phillips head screws. All right, so there we go. Those are the wires that we need. You can see my white and green right here is on the left. That's gonna feed to my fuel gauge. And then that heavy black one is my ground that I'm tapping into. Now there's two grounds on this uh, ground you see that green is for the power for the motor and then there's a black on the other side of it for the motor it doesn't matter which ground uh, you get because they both go to the same ground source so not a big deal but i got this ground here so that white and green that ground i'm just probed into the connector and then i'll hook up my variable resistor here so here's my variable resistor black and blue gives me 0.8 ohms. So that's where I'm gonna start. As I dial it up, it changes my ohms. So I just move this dial, my ohms change. So now this effectively is the fuel pump sender or the fuel level sender. As the ohms change, the fuel gauge changes. So that's what I wanna see. So I'm gonna hook this up to my leads here and then see what the fuel gauge does. Let me increase it, and there'll be some kind of delay. See the fuel level starting to drop. So now you see it's already capable of dropping lower than the halfway mark, and that's what the owner was saying that it would get stuck at halfway and wouldn't drop any lower.
So there we go. Now we're down to E, so we're on empty. So this quick little test shows us that the fuel gauge is capable to operate through its ranges. So the conclusion I see here is that it's not the fuel gauge, it's not the instrument uh, panel, but it is the fuel sender on the pump that's the issue. Well, there you go. That's how you can test your fuel gauge uh, to make sure that the gauge itself is uh, operative. This vehicle will need a fuel pump, the fuel level sender, and the pump are one unit, so they come together. We'll see what the owner wants to do. They're kind of a spendy unit, but, but we'll see. If we do end up replacing it, I'll go ahead and make another video uh, on that separate. I'll post it up here if it's available. But uh, that's it. Quick, simple, straightforward. Using a variable resistor uh, to diagnose this uh, made it quick and easy, about 10 minutes uh, altogether. All right, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.